Hey guys, welcome back to the D Time Love Show. You join me today um, <laughs> during the well, the third lockdown in the UK, the second wave um, due to this pandemic, and um, I'm starting to polish my my watches. Do a quick wristwatch check. I'm sporting the Seiko SKX. 007. Just giving my crystals on my watch with a little clean um, before we get into the subject matter in hand today. Um, I am going to be talking about my favorite spinnaker watch, the Bradner on the bead of rice bracelet. Let's change perspective, get straight into the intro, and let's get into this video, guys. Take care. Let's take a closer look at my favourite Spinnaker watch. As you can see here, this is the Spinnaker Bradner. Not the Mark 1, the Mark 2. And I've reviewed this, this watch, um, how it's evolved over the last few years on the channel. And I'll leave technical reviews in the description below of the unboxings and the reviews of the Mark 1 and the Mark 2. But this is the final product, the final, you could say, uh, model of the Bradner, in my opinion. This model came out with the bead of rice bracelet and it really does have a strong nod to the past of that vintage compressor style case. The bead of rice bracelet is one of my favorite vintage style bracelets that I love, but vintage watches tend to be very flimsy and uh, you have to really know what you're doing when you're buying a vintage watch. And uh, this was a, a spinnaker watch that really appealed to me because those of you that follow me on the channel on Instagram will know that I'm a big fan of vintage watches and um, I, I do like watches that have a nod to the past and that this watch with its compressor style case and that bead of rice bracelet ticked off a lot of the boxes for me and hence why it's one of those fun watches that I have in the collection that I enjoy but I have to say in terms of value for money um, it's so good it's really spot on and I couldn't argue against it really um when I reviewed the mark one it wasn't perfect um I have to be honest with you but the mark two they made a lot of improvements and especially with that internal rotating bezel you know the sapphire crystal just all around the watch was executed really well and this is the emerald green version it comes with many different color variations but I love the Spinnaker retro uh, logo. I love the applied indices. I love this box edge sapphire crystal. I don't see how, if you can see that well on the camera, but it also magnifies the internal rotating bezel, which I absolutely love. Um, you can see that there, and you can see how it magnifies as at different angles. And it really does give it a vintage vibe of those acrylic crystals you get. You know, for example, the, um, the plexiglasses that you get on, you know, the vintage Rolex stage. So I love that look um, it gives to the dial and the way it magnifies is very cool. But this has got an anti-reflective coating. As you can see, they look at the dial, that textured dial, the emerald green. Um, I love the hands um, and I love that it has got a date function there at three o'clock. Really covers all the boxes, to be fair. But uh, this model in particular, um, the, the latest model comes with a rice of bead bracelet and it's very substantial, very solid. Um, high and finished polish on the in links there. Solid end links, I have to say, very good indeed. And just overall, um, it wears very well as well. And um, being overly critical, I would have preferred it to taper down. It's 20 millimeters throughout. Um, I would have preferred a tapering bracelet, but you can't have it all. There's no such thing as a perfect watch. But I just love the vibe that it gives with the overall package, that compressor style case. Those jewel crowns, very nice indeed, I have to say. It's a delightful piece, it really is. Really is a delightful piece. Let's have a look at it, let's get a closer look. 
It's got a diver's extension. Right, I do wear this watch quite a bit, to be fair. That's the clear case back. Comes with a Seiko NH35 movement. So looking at the dimensions of the watch, it's a 42 millimeter case diameter. Um, the band width is 20 millimeters and it does not taper. It's the only negative. It is a little bit chunky as well, I have to say. On a negative, what I have found is um, it's, <laughs> it's not going to fit under the cuff very well, I have to say. It's 15 millimeters um, can be a bit of an issue for people. Oh, doesn't want to focus today. There you go. That's, it's got brush finishing on the side. It's a really nice watch, I have to say. Let's get it on the wrist. Look at that, very nice indeed. You see that blue sheen there? That is the anti-reflective coating. Uh, very nice, I have to say. Been a lot of improvements with the Mark II, but with this variant, um, it also comes with improved packaging. It doesn't come with those cheap spinnaker boxes anymore. Don't get me wrong, for the price, you can't expect too much at this price point, but overall, um, it's packaged very well, I have to say. Very good indeed. But yet yeah, there it is, my Spinnaker Bradner. I do like the brand. I don't consider them a micro brand anymore. They've got staff. Um, they've got loads of models coming out. You know, they've got, I think they've even got a call center now. I'm not sure. But they are part of the Dartmouth watch brand that own AV8 watches, Ballas, Spinnaker here, as you can see here below. They're a big firm now and they're no longer considered a micro brand. They are doing very well. And um, I have to agree with the Spinnaker Brad and the fanboys. It's an absolutely delightful piece. And uh, I really enjoy wearing this watch, guys. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Just sharing one of my favorite Spinnaker watches in the collection. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.